does the person you are with encourage you to read you have to ask what does he bring for me roses or books if someone has a stake in making you better that person will push you towards books books are what we all need namaste gauri ji can you namaste acharya ji see me hear me yes uh, the fellows and the entire team of uh, people for animals public policy foundation people for animals uttarakhand they all here wonderful and we were eagerly waiting to um, hear you wonderful wonderful so let's begin yeah first of all i my deepest gratitude that you could take out time today uh, to address uh, you know a very like minded uh, group of people here we uh, align with the uh, values that you are uh, so known for uh teaching the masses and we are struggling to get the same message across so i think this will be a great interaction uh to our team we just like to introduce you um in a moment um, so guys acharya ji is basically he's a very learned fellow very well educated much more than me and much more than so many of you uh he is <laughs> he left uh, all of his worldly and his corporate job and everything uh, because he wanted to in his search for wisdom that's what my understanding is and that uh, he has not only attained it but he is sharing it widely the wisdom that our civilization uh, basically nurtured and has continued on and that we are now somehow forgetting is something that is uh, his mission and his ngo's mission that is called prashant adwait foundation he's also an author a very widely read author and a very widely heard teacher uh, and at this time we uh, you know you all have done your homework on him so you probably know uh, and, and seen his uh, wide following in the country he's also a very celebrated vegan and while we are all ethical vegans uh, that's where a point of convergence that i see and that uh, we you know understand from him how our message uh, is is sort of based in logic but is very misunderstood or understood by very few neglected just a small very tiny uh, you know eco chamber we've got where we keep talking about it but the general masses probably um, will explore ways with him and understand from his wisdom how to um, you know fine tune our message so that it uh, you know goes out uh, in a in a powerful way and people are able to see what is absolutely there in front of us which is it's an inevitable future you know if there has to be a future for this planet but uh, we just keep avoiding it we just think you know in very myopic terms and a lot of people don't even you know entertain the thought of being a vegetarian let alone being a vegan so those arguments keep coming to us and while we give our own very emotional arguments we uh, love to learn from uh, acharya ji how he handled such thoughts and uh, you know such arguments and how how we can make our uh, mission a little more powerful um our mission of making the world a little more compassionate and that's i i just stated once it's not just because we like animals we are a team of people acharya ji who are not only just people who like animals or who love animals or who like to cuddle animals or we feel very emotionally you know about them but we are people who are fighting for justice and i think there cannot be a higher justice than actually abolishing speciesism than abolishing just looking at all life in the same manner that we feel is the justice uh, that we wish to sort of communicate uh, so it's for the good of everybody not just the good of one dog or one elephant or one bird but the good of everybody 
So we'd love to know your thoughts on veganism first. Uh, and, and, you know, your likewise. First of all, Gauriji has been just too generous in introducing me. Uh, like you all, I am just a fellow struggler, um, far from successful. Um, I understand that uh, in the shared mission that we have, you face daily obstacles. Uh, so do I and my friends and uh, my team here. So <clears throat> it's much the same story, uh, same challenge and same pain. Um, and that uh, brings me to how I address the whole point of uh, veganism. Hmm? Same story, same challenge, same pain. Hmm? That's where the vegan story begins. You see, who are we? And uh, this is not just to construct an argument in favor of veganism. This is our reality. This is our existential fact. Hmm? Who are we? Uh, we are uh, creatures of uh, consciousness. And if we are not conscious, then uh, we are not human. Hmm? That's... Uh, not just uh, rhetorical, metaphorical. That's even biological and social, is it not? Hmm? Your consciousness uh, goes a bit awry and uh, you are dispatched to an asylum. Hmm? All your uh, other bodily functions are just okay. You might not even be harming somebody and yet you are not uh, considered fit to live among uh, normal, that is, conscious people. Hmm? Which means to be a normal human is to be a conscious human. Same applies to sick people. Uh, your body functions uh, might uh, still be holding up. But if there is uh, very little uh, probability of you ever uh, behaving uh, in a conscious way, you ever uh, becoming mentally functional like a normal human being, then, uh, well, euthanasia is not too far away. Even the family interest uh, drops. And if you were to be told about uh, such a possibility, Mm -hmm. uh, in the future regarding your own health, your own body, you too would probably say that if it comes to that, uh, please don't drag me on. Let me go. What does that mean? That simply means that life is consciousness and uh, uh, life without consciousness is not worth living. It's as simple as that. And it is not something you have to convince somebody on. It is an obvious fact. It is an obvious fact. A fact that applies to, to all living forms. But when it comes to human beings, this fact applies even more starkly. Why? Uh, because uh, we think, we ideate, we have a language, we structure. And we are people who are not satisfied. We want to reach a particular point called peace or liberation or fulfillment. We all have that, right? And that's why human beings have far uh, too many desires compared to other living beings. Hmm? Uh, all living forms have desires. But look at the desires of uh, Homo sapiens. We exceed them all hmm? um, by many times. So, so our existence is a conscious existence, not just biological. 
we are not uh, pieces of uh, meat loaves of flesh just walking around hmm? we have a purpose of life and that purpose of life is to come to as we just said a particular peace or realization or fulfillment simply put satisfaction so so the the existence itself is related to consciousness right consciousness now the consciousness that we are keeps changing uh, its subject its stuff huh? that which it, it is attached to that which it is busy with all that uh, thing keeps changing right right now i am for example uh, addressing uh, you all here uh, right uh, now you are listening to me an hour or two later something else would occupy your consciousness and same applies to me so the stuff of consciousness would change but consciousness remains right and it is not the stuff that we value are we together on this it is not the stuff that is so much valuable it is uh, consciousness that is valuable how do two people differ when we take two human beings to begin with we'll come to other living forms then how do two people differ they differ in the stuff of their consciousness right not in the fact of consciousness itself and we just said a couple of sentences back that the stuff is not all that important what is important is the very fact of consciousness not the object of consciousness hmm? so consciousness itself is important and what separates one person from the other is simply that the two people have different priorities uh, varying ideas uh, and uh, different things to take care of or be attached to be occupied with and all that right but the fact that they both have something to live for is a shared reality which means consciousness is what is supreme consciousness is what makes us alive and equally consciousness is what we live for hmm no no extend the argument to animals the stuff of their consciousness is definitely different huh? we uh, might be thinking of of discoveries inventions literature art animals don't think of that hmm? and if they do we do not know of that hmm? at least they don't think of these things in the way that we do right uh, from from our point of view so the stuff of their consciousness is uh, is different but they are conscious and the fundamental cravings that we have are very much uh, alike to theirs is it not so in terms of thought and the content of thought obviously we are very different we are different from each other and we are very different when it comes to other species but when it comes to the very fundamentals of life are we not all one think of it we we do so many things hmm uh what is the fundamental tendency driving the various things that we do for example that the tendency to secure a future the tendency to just live on hmm shopenar it was the will to live the will to just continue that he said is the basic uh, human existential tendency i am asking don't animals have that tendency at the root of all consciousness is the will to survive and continue we don't want to die the animals too don't want to die right we feel 
pain, we suffer, so do animals. The reasons might be very different. Often the reasons are in fact not too different. Separate a human mother from her baby and you see the suffering. It's very apparent. Separate a cow from her calf and the suffering is much the same. So the fundamentals of consciousness we share with animals. To some extent, to a lesser extent, we share those things even with plants. Hmm? And if we want to go deeper than that, then even with organisms that uh, uh, have just a few few tissues, basic, or, or just uh, even, even a single cell, like an amoeba or a paramecium, the will to continue living is found there as well. If you attack an amoeba, it has ways to survive. Hmm? And it wants to prolong its existence into eternity by reproducing. And it has its own peculiar way of uh, reproduction. The same things that we do. Outwardly, there is so much that we have created and that looks so spectacular and so different from the jungle kingdom. But inwardly, at our core, don't we all have the same desires, the same tendencies that animals have? Is not the very core of consciousness the same? And it is consciousness, the maximization of consciousness, the liberation of consciousness, that is also the purpose of life. Which means that a conscious entity has to be looked at with respect, with a certain love. Hmm? If you if you want liberation of consciousness, how can you hurt another conscious being? Especially when you know that it is the stuff of consciousness that differs, not consciousness itself. If your own consciousness is worthy of being taken care of, being nurtured and being liberated, how can the same consciousness, when seen in another living being, be abominable, negotiable, violable? The same thing, when I see it in my own self, if it is respectable, it will remain respectable even if it is seen in somebody else's self. Right? If I really want to eliminate suffering, then uh, suffering is what I want to eliminate, not just my own suffering. Because as long as I keep saying my own suffering, this my own itself remains the cause of suffering. <coughs> this localization of consciousness itself is the limitation and the constraint and the bane of consciousness. I want to be happy, right? We all want to be happy. Why are we unable to be happy? Because we want to be happy at the cost of others. So I want to say, I want to be happy and I want to have my own happiness. So this my own is what prevents true happiness from coming to me. A very localized and limited and individualized happiness is what I want. I don't want happiness. If I want happiness, it would be an impersonal happiness that I would share with as many beings as possible. <coughs> so, if, if, if consciousness is my goal or happiness is my goal or freedom from suffering is my goal and I'm true to my goal, then I'll want these same things for others. And if I want these things only for myself, then I cannot have them even for myself. That's a rule. If you want these things, hmm, 
these best of things that life can offer only for yourself then you will not have them even for yourself but if you want them for everybody then you will have it for yourself as well so if i want my happiness at the cost of somebody's life the thing is the the, the poor thing will lose its life and i won't even get what i want to get hmm? at the cost of his life it's a double whammy nobody gains anything no emotions involved it is just mathematically a loss making proposition it's simply bad existential economics i wanted happiness by consuming that other person or animal that's what we want right otherwise there is no need to hurt the other <coughs> so i hurt the other thinking that happiness is a zero sum game i throw sadness upon you i inflict suffering upon you and uh, wishfully i think that will give me happiness hmm? happiness to my consciousness that's a, that there's a problem there you are trying to violate an inviolable rule it's a rule of existence prakriti that these things cannot be had in isolation that you cannot have these things only for yourself these are the most subtle gifts of living that cannot come to an individualized person money you can have for yourself i understand it's your bank account and if it's deposited in that account it belongs only to you nobody else can ever say but when it comes to liberation it can never be personal when it comes to real happiness that is joy it can never be personal hmm? money can be a zero sum game uh, uh, i snatch 100 rupees from you you lost 100 i gained 100 the sum is zero the same cannot be applied to happiness i cannot take your life and enhance mine if you have lost your life in the bargain i too have lost mine equally if i can enhance your life i have enhanced mine we are inseparably connected and the name of the connecting tissue is consciousness that's what we share we all hmm? and in that there is no zero sum arithmetic if you lose so do i if you gain so do i so that day i was in rishikesh and after the camp and there was this little puppy and we posted a pic <coughs> me and the pup and along with that we wrote a little caption from my favorite saint poet yah tan vah tan ek hai ek pran dui gaat apne ji se janiye mere ji ki baat so this body and that body are actually the same the pran is the same pran here refers to consciousness gaat means body ek pran dui gaat the bodies appear different but the life is the same life meaning consciousness ek pran dui gaat two bodies but the consciousness is just the same hmm? so that's what you hurt the other you are hurting yourself it's not even a matter of uh, of emotion it's not even a matter of uh, sympathy people won't understand even if you call it empathy hmm? have to help them see you kill the other and you are killing your own possibility of joy fulfillment liberation don't you want that <coughs> in some sense the the chicken is gone it won't suffer anymore 
but you have condemned yourself to enhanced future suffering by just doing what you did. It's bad. You, you disrespect the consciousness there and you have disrespected your own consciousness. And if you disrespect your consciousness, how will you ever bring it to fulfillment? Am I too abstract? What are the friends saying? Um, are they feeling disconnected? I don't know. <laughs> I'm certainly not. Because I can, <laughs> I, I'll tell you uh, something here. Uh, when I first went to the parliament for the very first time, and I was just like a tourist walking around, I saw this huge, uh, you know, uh, engraving in right in front of the parliament hall, which said, Vasudev Kutumbakam. And uh, then I studied a little more about it. You know, all the world is one family. Globalization is one interpretation of it. But I think from our civilization point of view, I think um, it, it's more deeper than that. And it's about all consciousness actually being the same, exactly what you said. And uh, basically indicating a kind of a singularity from which everybody originated. Wonderful. Which Wonderful. even Felix, physics uh, agrees with now. Wonderful. We can't, we can't uh, look at species in silos. And you know now even the World Health Pro Organization has come up with the One Health Program. Because all health is one. Uh, those are little things where it's manifesting itself. But it's just too, too little, too late. Are we too late uh, to save the planet, uh, Jaraji? I mean, is it really too late? Sometimes I feel like saying, yes, it is already too late. Probably that is the fact as well. Uh, but that does not matter. You see, it might not be too late. It might already be too late. How does it matter? One has to just uh, keep fighting on. Huh? Not for those uh, who are gone. Uh, not for the future. But for the present possibility that there is something precious, lovely, worthwhile that can probably be <coughs> redeemed uh, and one will not be able to forgive herself if one doesn't uh, give it all one has. Uh, <coughs> you see, I don't know about the future of the planet. Uh, so the more I go into the science of it, the more it uh, starts uh, looking quite certain that uh, this unfortunate and monstrous uh, species of ours isn't going to last uh, another hundred years. In fact, uh, within the next decade or two, we'll, we'll start uh, seeing very, very obvious signs of the approaching end. All that is going to happen in our lifetime. But anyway, when, when 100 years is too distant a future, I do not know what would happen. How much time do we have to live as, as individuals? I, I suppose at the most I have a few decades. Uh, the fellows are probably younger. They'll have a spare decade or two compared to me. We don't have too much time. Let's fight it out. And that's the best use we can put our life to. That's what. That's how I, I, say, I look at it. I don't know what the result of this battle would be. But it's worth fighting. Huh? Mm. <clears throat> Calculations tell me that uh, the odds are not in our favor. Right? But in things like these, calculations don't matter that much. Even if there is just a 0.1% probability left, one would still give it everything. It's like having a 
loved one in ICU or on ventilator, one cannot give up. One fights uh, till the last breath. Huh? So, uh, so that's what well, that's what we can do. And uh, I also know that our individual efforts are probably not going to suffice. So, one one waits for uh, creation to throw up something quite unexpected. Hmm? It's not as if uh, we are the sole guardians responsible for uh, the entire uh, creation. Hmm? Things happen and strange things happen. They say truth is stranger than fiction. Hmm? One, one COVID had the potential to teach us so much about the fragility of our ecosystems, about uh, the impermanence of all that we have, and about the helplessness of all man-made support systems. Hmm? So we, we never know uh, what's in store and when an opportunity might present itself. So let's just keep doing the maximum and the best we can. And uh, even if nothing comes uh, uh, out of it, it would at least be a life well spent. Hmm? We can die in peace. <laughs> Yeah, you're absolutely right. I, uh, it's uncanny how our thoughts completely align. I also feel that, um, you know, it's, it's to be fought because it's a battle worth fighting. And uh, it's something that would, you know, uh, joy or not, but it at least does not give us the guilt uh, at the end of the day of having done nothing. So while we see too much, it's just, whatever little bit that we can spend our time doing uh, to make things better. Um, that's, uh, thank you so much for your answer. Uh, there's one question that kind of just goes into everybody's mind and we secretly discuss it with small groups, but we want to probably ask you about it. Uh, there are, there is a section segment a certain segment of vegans who are anti-natalist vegans. They think that the world is not worth multiplying in. We will not have any uh, anybody else in the world because it's just way too much. The resources are not enough and we would not subject anybody else to it. Is it ethically right or is it ethically morally duty-bound? People should bring more people so they can raise them in a I don't know. It's it's a very conflicting thing, and people don't are not able to find their moral, correct, strong ground to stand on. What do you have? Have you ever thought about it, Acharya? Yeah, I think about it. I speak about it, and uh, I think I'm quite uh, unequivocally in uh, favor of it. Huh? You see, it it's not a personal choice anymore. Yes, I bring a child to this world and the kind of uh, resource consumption that implies simply means uh, death to thousands of trees and uh, lakhs of animals and, uh, and it's a geometric thing, no? It's not just one being that I bring to the world. The being that I bring to the world would uh, continue to multiply. Hmm? So if you look at the entire geometric series, uh, when I uh, have one kid, I have actually had maybe 10, 20 or 40 kids. That's what it means. Purely from the point of resources, does the earth have uh, enough to uh, 
sustain or tolerate even one more individual? The answer does not lie in emotions or opinions. The answer has to lie in rigorous computation. If you look at economics, if you look at uh, the kind of uh, resources that an average individual consumes today, and the average individual not only consumes that uh, uh, many resources today, he aspires to consume even more in the future. So if you bring a child to life, the resource consumption of that uh, child, that single, uh, that single individual is likely to be at least 5 to 10 times more compared to the amount that you consumed. Huh? And uh, we are not even talking of the fact that the child will beget even more kids into the world. So I, I have a baby and that means slaughtering so, so, so many animals. We should be talking in lakhs. Just for our consumption, every day we, we slaughter crores of animals. Hmm? Even the number on a per minute basis is staggering, is it not? So when somebody talks of reproduction, when people talk of pregnancy, I say, when you produce the baby, also produce roads. Also produce school, also produce an apartment. How does your responsibility end with just uh, getting a baby to this world? Now the baby will need so much. From where will that come? From where will the road come? Otherwise the road is jammed. Because of your baby, you need an extra lane. To have that extra lane, you will have to slaughter so many trees. From where will the air come? You know of the, the AQI, you, you know of the pollution levels. From where will the coal come? Where will the steel come? The electricity, where will it come from? The kid will surely want a car. Where will the car come from? All of that ultimately crashes upon the environment. Right? Because the environment can't speak and can't resist. You produce a baby and you, and you tell your neighbor, now that I have a baby, I need extra space. So uh, I'll, I'll violate your premises and occupy one of your rooms. Will your neighbor allow that? Your neighbor won't. But there are trees behind your house. Now that you have a baby, you, you go and uh, hack those trees down. And you say, now I have some free space and we can have extra room there for the baby. Baby is growing up. The baby doesn't always remain a baby. So you want an extra room. The trees won't resist. The neighbor resists. Everybody resists. Only the trees don't resist and the helpless poor animals, they don't resist. So when the baby comes to this world, it is the trees and the animals whose death sentence has been read out. Lacks of animals die the very day you give birth to a kid. So, <clears throat> so I, I just don't think that the, that the traditional animalistic feeling of, uh, of giving birth and the, and the social concept that life is fulfilled only when you have a full nest. I don't think any of that holds uh, good today. <coughs> but practically, I also know that in both uh, men and women, especially in women, there is a biological and a social urge to give birth. And not all individuals uh, will be intelligent or compassionate enough to to listen to arguments or listen to the truth. So to them I say, if you want to have a baby, have one. Have one and stop at that. And millions of Chinese families were able to stop at one baby. It's not that they couldn't bear it. They lived happily with their one kid. 
so so stop at that and to others i say who who don't want to have a kid but they still want to enjoy the presence of a kid i say go and adopt somebody how is adoption not a great choice if it stops at one it is still okay because that would effectively mean that the population is not growing in between we will have uh, definitely over enthusiastic couples who will go for the second one so mm, so fine I mean, uh, that kind of allowance we have to make but my appeal to all people who can who can see and who can listen and who have a heart is to understand that your baby is the death of millions of other babies don't do that thank you for putting the message out so clearly we've only just spoken about it not trying to offend anybody but basically it's it's the truth that we all have to confront and uh, consumerism is on the rise and uh, it only grows with more people on the planet and you very rightly said that for even somebody who wants to buy one small thing there is so much impact on the environment that it inevitably starts a domino effect on everybody on so everybody. also also when you when you also when you have a kid because you uh, talked of the domino effect that in some way triggers so many others to have a kid see those who do not uh, have kids surprisingly they fail to become inspirations they remain aberrations hmm but if you do get a kid then your entire exist extended family feels inspired to have one more of their own so that's the kind of domino effect that you experience but you you if you don't have a kid you don't declare it loudly on social media hmm? there is nothing to uh, go to the town with huh? it's not news right i haven't had a baby you won't say today is the third anniversary of me not having a baby right that that kind of absurdity you won't display but when you do have a baby then uh, your uh, uh, social media and your entire circle is awash with pics and congratulations and baby stuff and this and that and that way you are triggering the maternal and paternal instinct in so many others and they do not know what to make of life so the moment they see those pics they say come on let's do it and, and that's the way uh, Uh, that's the way human stupidity operates what can one do that's so true that's so true so uh, you just spoke about social media jay you have such a strong message and you have chosen social media as a platform uh, as one of the platforms one of the prime platforms to amplify your message uh, we are all you know uh, very good at whatever i mean we try to do whatever we uh, do best with authorities with you know with people going doing a ton of capacity building and whatever but we always keep social media a little you know on the low priority why uh, i want you to explain why for this message you have chosen social media and what is the what has what role has it played uh, just a little on the importance of why all of these people here should uh, and how many times would be optimum because some of them might be completely crazed about constantly being on instagram or facebook or twitter even that is not all right not being there is not all right so what is the optimum amount that should you know, one has to remember yeah, one has to remember that social media is a is a tool <laughs> we are not going there for mere entertainment not that entertainment is despicable it's okay to entertain oneself fine if one but uh, when it comes to the mission social media is an instrument social media is a weapon so uh, one uses it 
one uses it to strike at people where they are right it, it's it's obvious one has to reach people only where they are and they are all there on instagram and uh, youtube so that's where they have to be caught there is no option hmm? uh, apart from uh, from work and personal time this is where uh, people uh, spend themselves they are hooked to their phones they are watching stuff there and uh, the the collective time of humanity that is being spent in front of the mobile screen is astonishing uh, if we look at the 800 crore people that we are and if we uh, talk of uh, smartphones and internet penetration <clears throat> that would mean probably 500 or 600 crores of us have access to uh, social media uh, i suppose uh, facebook itself has been the app has been downloaded what 5 billion times 2 billion times how many downloads does it have the the number of downloads uh, of that single app runs into billions hmm? so that's where the people are uh, if somebody is not in his house you do not knock at that house right if people have all assembled at some place that's the place you go to if you want to address them hmm? so, so so that's what that's what but but uh, as professionals and as missionaries obviously we remember that uh, for us social media is work work and very dedicated work it's just that the the rules of this workplace are very nascent uh, very tentative they are still evolving so one has to learn on the job uh, <clears throat> youtube uh, today is not what it was 5 years back um, and the arrival of tiktok totally changed instagram so so it changes it changes and one has to keep pace uh, if one doesn't do that then one one loses the audience and it's important to not to lose your audience because it is the audience that you want to work on hmm? it's not obviously about the two of us holding conversation here i would want this conversation to reach at least lakhs of people Hmm? had it been in my power i would have wanted it to reach the entire population uh, i don't have that kind of power uh, but that's what imagine imagine if these things can reach everybody that to 10 times a day huh? uh, won't be won't uh, we have hope we were just talking um, of uh, of the odds being stacked against uh, the survival of this planet against the success of compassion uh, uh, won't the picture completely change if we have access to the minds of all those people who are rushing uh, very <clears throat> blindly towards their own destruction uh, and we cannot stop them just because we do not have access to them so access reach is everything there is nothing more important than that in the work that we are doing see see we are not scientists working on something privately in some isolated lab our mission involves influencing people because it's people who make choices and it's their choices that we want to impact so probably there is nothing more important than social media today hmm? and if you can add print and tv to social media um, you are a winner you are a winner hmm? imagine uh, if somebody with let's say 100 million followers on instagram could have a a change of heart hmm? a, a burst of uh, sudden enlightenment and dedicate himself to the cause of animals hmm? just imagine the kind of impact that would make 
somebody with 100 million followers is consistently talking of empathy and compassion and the kind of cruelty that we display and the mm, and the facts of the animal agriculture uh, industry and mm, and mechanized slaughterhouses and and the cruelty that even the uh, common uh, uh, members of the population display if he is constantly talking of this i mean we'll we'll get uh, a steroid shot mm, in 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 terms of our mission we may we may like it or not like it but that's how things stand right if if you can uh, get the leading voices to espouse your cause you are doing <coughs> the millions of species a great favor and that's what uh, they are all uh, calling out for from their jungle hmm? they are saying please uh, get us heard hmm? we don't have a voice please uh, uh, get somebody with a big voice to speak for us <clears throat> yeah so yes you're right it's a, it's an amplifier like no other we can't collect physically so many people in one place we can't knock on enough doors and tell them about our message so it's it's uh, absolutely important that you know a few times a day we speak up on social media and probably try to become our own influencers you know in our own small right. ecosystems we can uh, become voices that uh, that will be heard at least among our friends and followers um and i'm so glad you're uh, gaining followers every day may your tribe increase a lot of uh, time of the foundation and uh, would you believe it about 80% of the total donation that we receive is spent on simply promoting our message in fact uh, i sometimes uh, say to the team reach is the mission nothing else is the mission if somebody asks you to define the mission in one word that one word is reach just reach out to as many people as possible and the rest will follow on its own hmm? the rest is natural what what needs to be laboriously done effortfully done is the act of reaching out that cannot happen naturally hmm? but once you have struck someone after that uh, there will be some kind of uh, reaction that you don't have to worry about after that the ball will roll on its own so the reach is the mission that's true and it's it's both very simple and difficult at the same time yes, uh, yes. you can do it on your phone you can do it on your computer but you have to uh, fine tune your message and uh, know a little about it yes. understand and be very perceptive about how the what the mood of the audience yes. is yes i i'll share the difficulty with you the difficulty in that is when when you come to know that it's all about gaining reach then as i said 80% of all that you have including your own time your own energy gets invested towards reach yeah. which means that uh, you start uh, taking your content a lot for granted you see 80% of yourself if i talk of my own time if a lot of that is going just towards reach huh then i have to be very sure that my content is worth it because i am not able to work on my content all my time is invested towards reach so so that's that's the problem one faces the content is the stuff that i want to reach to other people the content is the stuff that i want to reach to other people but because reach is so important therefore i cannot work on the content so 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 that that means that uh, 
one has to be internally very disciplined and even in limited time one has to ensure that uh, the content remains updated and that uh, the purity of what you are saying and the sharpness of your argument uh, remains intact and uh, it's it's a, it's a challenge but uh, yes yes that's right Thank you.